Brian here with BoxGuard Security. In this video series, we're going to take a look at our Honeywell Vista 20P programming section by section. Let's take a look. Okay guys, Ryan here with FoxGuard. We are going to dig into the actual programming of the Vista 20P. You'll notice when you first power this up, you have a blank screen. The first thing you need to do is press and hold down the 1 and 3 buttons. And that will jump you right into the actual keypad programming. The reason for that is this keypad, the 6160 or the 6160 RF, comes programmed as address 31 and right now the panel is looking for address 16 so when you hold 1 and 3 you're going to change that to 16 we're going to keep the receiver on address 00 high security off no and then that is the keypad pro, uh, programming part of the Vista 20P now it'll actually be able to talk to the panel which you'll see it's going to pull up the status now and uh, right now there's nothing programmed so what we're going to do is actually going to show you how to get into the actual panel programming and then go through step by step so the default installer code is 4112800 once you do that, it's going to hop you into your programming menu. And this is a large list of star 20 down to star 199. And they're different fields that you're going to enter, change data, and then proceed to the next one. Some of them are going to be relevant for your install. Some of them are not. Uh, but what we're going to do is go through all of them and give you a step-by-step -step how to program this thing top to bottom. So, <clears throat> now that you're into programming, um, one of the important things that you're going to need to know is how to get out of programming. So at any point, when you're in one of these star 20 to star 190, Nine, except for only a few like star 57 uh, star 56 uh, star 29 uh, which is the communicator uh, programming except for a few oddballs all you need to do is press star 99 and that's going to take you out of programming back to the normal state of the panel. Um, star will proceed to the next menu when you're in those fields. Pound will go back. Or it will also read you the field. So an example is star 20. We'll get back in. Let's say that we wanted to change the installer code which is the code that we use to get in. Let's say that we're going to change that to um, 4, 3, 2, 1. Those three confirmation dings means that it read the data and accepted it. Now, if we want to check that, we can do pound 20, and it will read it back to us all of the data that we put in there. That's important when you get to phone numbers or account numbers. Um, those are crucial things that you want to make sure are 100% accurate. Uh, everything is important, but if you have any questions, you can always just do pound and then that field that you're in. In your notes, in your PDF that you received or is downloadable off of our website, it will give you a step-by-step -step what each of these fields are and we will go through um, each one starting with star 20 again right down through all of the zone programming uh, all the way up to the very end how to enable your radio or communicator if you have one how to program a central station ID 
how to program fire zones, and then in some future videos we'll go over more complex things like how to program um, custom zones that have uh, a non-standard uh, way of reacting to an action in the field. Um, most of that stuff won't be necessary for your residential installs, but if you have um, commercial applications or high security applications, some of that stuff is great to know how to make it so that it doesn't cause an alarm on the keypad, um, but it only sends messages, you know, through your phone if certain zones are activated or um, there's lots of different things that you can do and we'll go over all that. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do here is we are going to program zones 1 through 8. Um, there are some other programming that we're going to skip past, but by programming zones 1 through 8 uh, as no response, that will simplify the programming process so that as we enter and exit programming, you're not going to have to worry about trouble beeps fire alarms triggering, and uh, that type of stuff. So to enter the zone programming, we're going to go to star 5, 6. <clears throat> we're going to select 0, which is already there. So we're going to hit star. It's going to jump us right to zone number 1, star. And you'll see uh, in this summary readout, that this is zone 1 programmed as zone type 9 which is fire partition 1 that's the code that is reported to the central station it is a hardwired end of line zone hardwired end of line so we're going to change a couple things here and we're going to go 0 0 we're going to disable this zone. We're not going to delete it. We're going to do the same thing for zone 2, which is programmed as a 0, 1, which is exit entry. And I'm going to show you how to change this to normally closed. You can change this on zones 2 through 8 from end of line to normally closed depending on how your system is wired for simplicity um, we're going to do normally closed and <clears throat> I'm intentionally going to make a mistake here and then show you how to find it and correct it because that is something that you're gonna you're gonna run into while you're programming you're gonna miss things you're gonna make errors and I'm going to show you the right way and the wrong way to do something. Uh, so this is going to give you your summary. We're not going to program the alpha for the key, for the zone. We're going to go right to zone 3. And this one is programmed as a perimeter, which is 0, 3. We're going to change that to 0, 0. I'm not going to delete it. Zone 4. Zero, zero. Not going to delete it. Zone 5. Same thing. Zone 6. Zone 7. Zone 8. Now, once we get to zone 8, that is the end of the hardwired zones on the Vista 20P. Zone 9 would start either a hardwired expansion, like the 4219, or that would be the beginning of your wireless zones, depending on how your system is configured. So right now we're going to hop out of zone programming, and that's going to take us back to this basic menu. And from there we can go back to the regular start 20, which is our first field 
or any other field that we're going to program. Right now, we're going to hop out of programming, and then we're going to find the, the mistake, and I'm going to show you how to correct it. <clears throat> now, the Vista 20P will prompt you to hit star for faults, and it's going to show you fault 2. And the reason for that is we programmed zone 2 as a perimeter or an entry exit, and we did not eliminate that zone. So, pretty simple. Hop back into programming. And during the first video, we changed that installer code to 4321, which is important that you write that down. We're going to go back to star 56. We're not going to confirm it. We can go right to zone 2. And then you'll see here that it's entry exit. This will help you identify how the zone is programmed without uh, going through the entire menu. So we're just going to change this to 00. zero. We're not going to delete it. 00, zero to exit. Star 99 to exit programming. And now we will have a green light, disarmed, ready to arm. The advantage of uh, killing those first eight zones first is as you enter and exit programming, as you're testing things, getting your feet wet, kind of learning the flow of programming, um, you're not going to have to worry about physically closing off those zones on the board or fire alarms, burglar alarms going off. It'll make it a much easier process for you. That's always what I do as step one with programming. Just turn those first eight zones off. After that, we're going to hop into programming zones 95, 96, and 99. Uh, those are your emergency zones, and we're going to get into that next. So by this time we have already gone through the zones 1 through 8 and then the zones 95, 96, and 99 on programming for the Vista 20P. We're going to hop right into showing you how to program an RF zone um, and then we'll go over the hardwired zones later. Uh, but <clears throat> one thing that's important to mention is your system needs at least one way to talk wirelessly to your contacts. That's either going to be usually through a 6160 RF keypad, which is hardwired from the keypad to the Vista 20, and then wireless from here to the wireless contacts, or you can use what's called a 5881, uh, typically the ENH which will allow you more hard, uh, more wireless zones. Um, that you would use over a 6160 RF in case you have a large dwelling, a large unit, um, and you want to centrally locate it. The distance for these is typically pretty good, um, but in some larger houses where you might have, um, you know, 5,000, 6, 7, 8,000 square feet, uh, you want to try and centrally locate that receiver uh, to reach the furthest one instead of biasing this towards uh, an entry door and then having the, in, in, the entire distance for the wireless contact to try and talk back to this. So, <clears throat> we're going to hop back to star 56 and then zero for no confirm. And for simplicity, we're going to go to zone 9. 1 through 8 is hardwired. 9 is where your wireless can start. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that an entry exit zone. So like the front door, which is zero, 01. And then partition 1. 
we're going to leave this report code is 10 it automatically knows to look for a wireless zone since it can't be hardwired so 3 is an RF transmitter and then there's a couple of different ways to enter this serial number the serial number for a wireless transmitter is located on each device the outside and typically inside um, and there's a couple different ways to enter that <clears throat> so what you just saw was if you open and close the wireless zone while you're in that programming it will automatically register this serial number which will match this and it will assign the correct loop number this is the easiest way to properly program this number in there because if you manually enter it and you have a large amount of zones common mistake is to mess up on the loop number if you're not exactly sure whether it should be one two three or four um, and those are different for different types of contacts the 5816 will typically be programmed as loop two motion detectors glass breaks and slimline contacts loop one uh, so there's some variations there after this is in there and it's programmed for loop one since there is no hardwired option for this particular contact you're gonna skip we're gonna skip the alpha for now and then we're gonna get out of programming star 99 and then the default user code is 1234 we'll turn chime on for testing purposes and then we can verify that this contact was actually properly programmed after we program the alpha part of this it would say front door not just zone 9 which is very important for um, properly labeling and organizing your system at 2 o'clock in the morning zone 11 isn't going to mean as much as if it says zone 11 rear kitchen door um, important note there so that's how to program a wireless contact in you can also manually type these numbers in there and manually assign it uh, to a loop number uh, depending on how it's installed and then next we're going to start at zone 20 the installer code and go right down through the whole basic programming of the panel okay so now that we have the basic zones 1 through 8 95, 96, 99 uh, programmed and we went over how to program a wireless contact right now what we're going to do is go through the basic programming of the Vista 20P which is star 20 through star 54 and that is just some basics of programming um, that every installation will have to do and what we're going to do is go right down the line so pause this video at each step take your time make sure and make notes and if you have your own uh, PDF printed or your own uh, install guide to follow along that'll definitely make it a lot easier so the first thing which is already up is star 20 and this is the installer code this is the four digit code that you need to enter programming the default code is 4112-800. Strongly suggest changing that 4112 to a code that is um, specific to you, but is not going to be the same code as what you use to arm and disarm the system. So let's just say that you use the last four of your cell phone number, and that is 7533. What you're going to do is do star 20, seven five three three and now you want to make sure and write that down 
so that you don't forget it. Um, keep that in a safe place. Typically, as we do these first um, 54 fields or up through star 54, that three ding confirmation will mean that you're moving to the next field. So the next one is quick arm enable. Residential applications, it's a great idea to keep it as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is hit one to enable that and then zero for partition number two. So what that means is that you can do pound away to arm your system instead of one, two, three, four away. It's a great feature. If you don't want that for a commercial application, you would select zero instead. RF jam. We're going to keep this simple. Zero. Uh, RF jam is RF interference from uh, intentional or non-intentional RF devices. Uh, in my experience, it's much better to keep that off unless we are talking about a super high security installation, which is a completely different topic. <clears throat> Forced bypass. Um, this is something that you want to enable. So we're going to do one, zero. And the different things here that you see, one, two, and three, or some of them have one and two, that's the partitions. So right now we're only programming partition number one. That's why the second one is going to be zero. Forced bypass means that if you have a faulty window in your living room, you can bypass that living room window and arm the rest of your system. So to start 23, forced bypass 1, 0. The next is going to be the RF house ID, which unless you're getting into home automation is going to be 0, 0 for partition 1, 0, 0 for partition 2, 0, 0 for common partitions. So six zeros. Chime by zone. Keep it simple. Zero, zero. That means that every zone that is perimeter will chime. Interior zones will not. You can complicate it and assign it only to certain zones if you want. However, I don't recommend that. X10 house code. Zero. Not needed. Access codes. Star 28. We're going to do zero, zero, because you're not going to be accessing your Vista 20 through a phone line. Then we jump down to 31, single alarm per zone. We're going to do zero. That's a standard uh, programming procedure for that one. Fire alarm sounder timeout, which is star 32, we're going to do zero. That means that if we program the siren to sound for eight minutes, that the fire alarm, if there is one, will also sound for that same amount of time. And right here, bell timeout. This is a little trickier. Um, whatever number you put in here is going to be multiplied by four. So if we put in a one, that would be four minutes. 2 is 8, and so on and so forth. So a very standard 2, 8 minutes is a long time for that siren to go off. You can change that if you wish. We're going to go with standards here. You can surely modify and test if you wish uh, for your application. This is just one way to do it. Exit delay, 34, a very standard 60 second delay. Nothing for partition 2. That means when you arm it, you have 60 seconds to exit the building out of one of your entry exit doors. Entry delay, a very standard 30 seconds. Nothing for partition 2. Entry exit delay 2. Why complicate it? So what I did just there was any time that you want to skip a field of programming, you're going to do star that field 
and then star again and it will either delete the data or skip past it. So we were at star 35 and if we want to read our what we put in we'll do pound 35 and it's going to read us 30 and then 0, 0 for the second partition and then if we do star 36 we don't want a second entry delay for most installations we want to keep it simple uh, you don't want to have 30 seconds on one door and 15 seconds on another because a year from now you probably won't remember so we're going to skip past that by going star 36 star now we need to tell it where we were so we're going to go to star 37 exit morning uh, typically we program zero zero and the reason for that is if you have pets or if you're one of those people that likes it quiet not a lot of bells and dings and whistles um, if you program the exit warning your system will beep for that entire 60 seconds some people it's no big deal a lot of customers in my experience don't like that so we disable that feature confirmation of arming ding zero zero if you have key fobs programmed you can program two zero for that star 38 field um, but it is not necessary uh, it's going to give a chirp over the siren when you arm it through the key fob star 39 very important you want to always select number one for this and that way if your system is armed and you lose power and the power turns back on your system comes back to life in an armed state not only is that a security feature um, it's also good in a, in a break in attempt where they try to bypass the system by killing power and hoping that it's just disarmed the system Star 40 is the PABX access. So we're going to skip past that. And we're going to go right to star 41. Now, this likely will not be used for your system uh, because this is only used if you have a telephone line connected to your system. Star 41 is if you are connected to a central station for monitoring only through a phone line. If you are monitored, chances are uh, there's a very high chance these days that you have a cellular or IP connection, in which case for star 41 you would not put anything. Star 41, star. Now, star 42 is <clears throat> Uh, the second phone number for that same reporting so we're certainly not going to use that one and now what we need to do is get back to where we can input the star 42 star now we're jumped into star 43 which is the four digit account number let's just say for And star 42 is the secondary phone number, uh, which we're not going to need either. So we're going to go, hang on. Star 42 is the secondary phone number that we're going to do star 42 star. Star 43 is the primary four digit account number uh, that's going to be used with your system. If your system is being reported, or if your system is reporting to a central station, then you will need to put in a four-digit account number there. Let's just say that it's one, two, three, four, star to enter, and that'll jump you to your next field. <clears throat> if your system is going to be local only, then you don't need to input a number there for the star 43. Star 44 is the same thing for the second partition. Star 44 star. And we're also going to do the same thing for 45 and 46. 
um, to jump past them. Star 47, if your system is connected to a telephone line, you can put in a 1 for a tone dial, not pulse. Um, you don't need to put in anything there if it is just a local only system or if it is monitored um, through an IP or cellular communicator. So, star 48, 99% of all the systems are going to go 7 7. And that is contact ID. Uh, contact ID is the way that it is reported to the central station. Star 49 is going to be 0. We're going to report everything to the same central station. You can complicate it. Uh, I don't know of any necessary scenarios where you would need to report different things to different central stations, so we're just going to do zero there. That's just flexibility that Honeywell gives you. Uh, star 50, burglary dial delay. Most systems are going to be a zero. Uh, however, if you are in a jurisdiction that requires a delay on burglary signals, um, which is something that you can look up, then there is something called a SIA limit. Um, SIA is an organization uh, that works with local jurisdictions, uh, law enforcement, code enforcement, and mandates certain things. Uh, in our area here, we don't have them, so that's not something that we get involved with. Um, but that's something that you can look, at, look into for your area. Uh, if you're going to be monitored. And so star 53 is going to be a zero. Star 54 is going to be a two. And then we jump to star 55. Um, this is going to depend on how your system is laid out. If you have a cellular communicator, you're going to input a one. If you have a telephone connection, you're going to input a zero. Um, so for this, let's just say that you have a cellular communicator. We're going to input a one there. And then that we are going to pick up the next video on star 59. Uh, that's where we'll continue. That gets into a lot of different trouble reports and how to report low batteries um, stuff like that. That'll take us right through um, star 95 on the next one. Okay guys, and now here we are back starting at field 59, <clears throat> continuing our Vista 20P programming. And we're going to continue here and pick up where we left off on the last video. Star 59 is your exit error report. Typically, we were going to input a zero for that guy there. Now, some of this will depend on whether or not you're being monitored. And some of this will be for a uh, self-monitored system. However, typically, uh, if you're having a monitored system, this is how it would be programmed. If you're being monitored by a central station that's going to get reports and contact you, uh, this will vary from system to system. This is just one way to program it. This isn't the only way. This is the way that we typically do if it's a monitored system. So I'm going to walk you through this now. Trouble report code 1, 0. Bypass. We're not going to send um, signals if anything is bypassed. So that would be zero, zero. AC loss, zero, zero. Again, that will depend on your monitoring station. If you enable AC reporting, typically that will flood your central station with power outages and they'll get thousands of signals from um, locations all over the power grid at the same time. Um, so we don't need to know when the power goes out. Stuff like Total Connect, 
uh, will let us know that and that's typically not crucial unless it's a high security system. 63 low battery, we definitely want to know that, so that's going to be 1, 0. If we're on test, yes, 1, 0. Open report, don't need to know, 0, 0, 0. Armed away and armed stay. This will be six zeros, three separate entries. Zero, 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 zero. RF transmitter, low battery, is star 67, and that is going to be one, zero. And what that will do is enable your system that if one of your wireless contacts, battery goes low over time, um, it will let the system and the central station know and they'll get a, a signal that says zone 15 kitchen sliding door low battery. Um, but it will also let you know here on the keypad so that's not necessary. Uh, that's just one way to program it. Cancel report zero zero. Star 70. This is a big one. Uh, if you have a fire system this must be a one. If it is a burglary only, then it is not necessary and it can be a zero. So if you have any carbon monoxide, flood, fire, life safety, and you know important stuff like that, you want to make sure and have this as a one, uh, especially fire. And what that will do is, if there is a smoke detector that detects smoke, sets off the fire alarm, and then the air clears, then it will also send a restoral signal to the central station um, after that happens, or after you reset it, depending on how it's programmed. Uh, so we are doing a burglary-only system for this, uh, for the sake of this conversation. So that'll be zero. <coughs> And then a trouble restore. Uh, we want to know that, so it's going to be one zero. Bypass restore zero zero. We don't need to know if something's bypassed. Uh, AC restore. We didn't enable the AC reporting, so we don't need to know if it's restored. Zero zero. Low battery restore one zero. We want to know if that backup power inside the Vista 20P uh, charges back up fully, um, so we want that. RF transmitter low battery restoral is star 75, so that's going to be a 1, 0. Test restore, not necessary, 0, 0. 77, daylight savings time, you're going to put in 3 pound 11 for Eastern Standard Time and then 2 1 um, for the daylight uh, start and end weekend so 76 and 77 may uh, vary depending on where you're located make sure and look at your installation manual for those exact numbers that you want to put in there now we jump to 84 which we don't want to auto stay arm so we're going to do zero. 85, zero. 86, cancel verify, zero. 87, miscellaneous faults, zero. 88, program mode lockout, definitely zero. 89, event log full, zero, zero. Star 90, we want to enable the event log, so we're going to do pound. One five. Again, that's star ninety pound one five. Star ninety one options. Uh, typically, this is going to be zero. Um, some options on that is if you are going to have a resistor inside your siren, that will be a one. And on older versions, if you had total connect, that would be a zero two. On older versions, the newer versions, it comes enabled. Phone monitor, definitely zero. Reports in armed period, 
typically a good practice is to um, download through a telco. We're going to do star nine four star. And then any kind of ring count is going to be pound one five. We'll pick up um, with star 91 on the next segment. And that is what I kind of consider level two here, what we just did of the Vista 20 programming. Um, this gets you through your trouble reports um, and some of your miscellaneous stuff. And then after that, we're going to talk about how to program Total Connect and additional keypads. So stay tuned. Okay, so once we kill uh, and deprogram zones 1 through 8, we're going to go right into zones 95, 96, and 99. And we're going to go back to star 56. And we're not going to confirm them. Uh, we can go right to 95, star. And these are going to be your emergency zones. 95 is typically fire, 96 is an auxiliary or an ambulance, 99 typically police. You can program them directly to the speed keys over here or you can keep the factory default settings of these three different button combinations which we'll go over later. So 95 we're gonna program that as fire so that's going to become a 09, and you're going to see that this is going to uh, display the word fire there for that zone type. We're going to leave this as a 10 report code, um, and we will get into whether your system is actually going to report to a central station, or if it's going to be a local only. Nevertheless, we're going to skip right past this. We're going to leave that exactly how it is. Right now, we're not going to do any alpha programming. This, we are going to program as a zero, 00. We're not going to have any ambulance response. We're going to keep this programming part as simple as possible, police and fire. You could program this if you wanted to. Disable that zone. 99 is going to be police which is going to be a zone type 7. And the reason that we're going to program this as an audible instead of a silent is that if someone is in your house, the siren will scare them out. You don't want a silent unless it's specific situations like a jewelry store or um, an actual home invasion type situation which that's an entirely different set of videos for right now to keep it simple if you press this button you want to scare someone out of the house so we're going to choose audible a zero seven and that's up to you to decide which is going to be best for your specific application um, and, and and there's a million different scenarios uh, I can give you my opinion um, on, on which one will be best, but for right now, this is just the programming part. Uh, zero 07, audible, 24 hours means it doesn't need to be armed, it can be disarmed, and that will still work. Zero 07, same report code. This is the first digit, this is the second, ends up as a 10. Not going to program the alpha and that will take care of the zone programming for right now. So we're going to hop right it back out of there. So basically what we did was we took care of the first eight and the last three zones, which are the only ones that typically come with any type of programming done to them. So right now we have a clean slate, and we know that when we program these zones, or these buttons here on the side, that we already have police and fire enabled and it's just one less thing to go back to. Again, this is just one way to do it. This isn't the only way. This is the way that we program systems. Hopefully this will uh, help you with your learning curve. 
Um, after that, we're actually going to go right to programming the speed keys, which is star 57. And these are identified as A through D. So this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D. We're going to start with A. We're going to enable that. Partition 1 which is for most residential systems there's only going to be one partition I strongly don't recommend complicating it with multiple partitions unless absolutely necessary and we will leave that as fire 95 is already programmed and then the B button is going to be 99 police So this C button here, since 96 is not activated, we're going to change that to display time. And then we'll do the same thing for button D, 0, 2, star. So now what we have is fire, police, time and date, time and date. Again, this is one way to do it. This isn't the only way. This is something that works for us to keep it simple. Zero, zero gets you out of that star 57 mode. Like I said before, star 99 will usually work depending on what field you're programming. Zero, zero sometimes is needed to hop back into this main menu. So now we can go to star 20 or we can go to star 56 we can enter back into any of those fields from where we are there. After this, we're going to go into programming the actual RF keypad and I'm going to show you how to program an RF zone um, as your next step. And this will change whether you have eight hardwired zones or if you have 16 hardwired zones and then you're going to start at zone 17 with your wireless. Um, those are going to be different videos and that's an entirely different conversation. So for right now we're going to keep it simple. I'm going to show you how to enable wireless contact to your 6160 RF and Vista 20 keypad. Hey guys, we're here with the Vista 20P programming continued. Um, we are on to star 160, field 160, and we're going to jump right back in here. Uh, if this is where you're at in your programming, feel free to hop in. Otherwise, we have lots of other videos with the programming up to this point, um, and one comprehensive video with everything included. Field 160. 171 typically are not going to be used for uh, any of your modern installations. Uh, those are for pagers and uh, pager delays, stuff like that. So there's a couple of different things you can do. If it's a new panel, you don't need to do anything for those fields. If you're unsure or taking over an existing panel, you can simply clear those fields by doing star 161 star star 162 star and so on and so forth down to 171 once we get down to 172 uh, that's the pager delay we're gonna do a zero on that guy star 174 is a cleaning report for fire devices which we want to have as a zero star 177 some miscellaneous stuff there for a device duration zero zero star 181 is going to be zero for 60 hertz star 182 for a standard residential installation uh, we are not going to use uh, star 182, 3, 4, or 5. Those are configurable zones. 
if you want to complicate your system or if you have a zone that is extremely demanding with its response uh, such as a water flow uh, that will only report during certain times of the day or during certain armed uh, states then you can make that zone do different things at different times and uh, that does get pretty tricky uh, that is not going to be used in 99 percent of your installations so we are going to skip those guys and the next one that we are going to tackle is <clears throat> star 189 star 189 has four inputs and these are your AUI devices your AUI devices are typically either a tuxedo touch keypad a 6280 touch keypad uh, or Total Connect itself if you have a monitored system and the Honeywell Total Connect app. Um, if you have a tuxedo, you are going to program 1, zero, zero, zero. If you have two tuxedo keypads, you will do 1, 1, zero, zero. And then your first two tuxedos are going to be address 1 and then 2. Now, if you have a tuxedo and total connect, you will do one, one, zero, zero. If you have a 6160 keypad, a standard keypad like this one that we're looking at, and total connect, you will do zero, one, zero, zero. Two is the spot where total connect gets programmed. Uh, that does not change, um, but those are a couple of the different configurations. So if you have three tuxedo keypads and total connect, you will do one, 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 one. And that's just enabling those AUI slots uh, to be able to talk to the Vista 20P control panel. There's a couple of other configurations that you could probably think of, but those that's the basic. So if you have a 6160 keypad only, this can be zero, 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 zero. Now, star 190, um, this initial keypad that we programmed, which is a 6160 RF, if you remember, we changed this from a address 31 to a, an address 16. Um, if you had a second keypad in a master bedroom or in a different area of the house, that will be address 17. And then the third one will be 18 and so on and so forth. So if you have a second or third keypad, you need to enable those uh, addresses so that it knows that those keypads can talk to the system. So let's say that we have uh, this keypad is the main keypad by the, um, by the interior garage door and we have a pre-wired keypad in the master bedroom. So we're going to turn on that second keypad and then when we power up that keypad we'll do the same thing press 1 and 3 and then change that address from 31 to 17 and then it can talk to the panel because we just en enabled that address 17 star 191 is keypad 18 and then we have 19, 20, 21, 22 and 23 which takes us up to star 196 so if you have those keypads you need to turn them on and then one and zero is typically the way that those are programmed um, if you want that keypad silent let's say it's in a master bedroom and you don't want any chimes or enunciations you could do um, if this was address 17 we could do one and then three instead of a one and a zero. One and a zero is default. It means anything that rings on the first keypad will enunciate on the second. One and three will make the second keypad silent. So down to 197. That is the exit time interval. On these keypads we need to put a two in. 
for most of your residential programming, we're only going to have one partition, uh, which I strongly recommend. So that will be a zero. And then star 199 is going to be the last one for this part of programming, and that is a zero. From there, we can go into how to program for Total Connect. Um, we've already done the additional keypads, and then pretty soon we're going to get into how to program a key fob, uh, which is something that trips a lot of people up, but we're going to tackle those things one thing at a time.